Absolutely. I now call to order the new Carlisle City Council meeting, September 17th, 2018, at 7 p.m. Mrs. Burner. We'll take it. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Shane. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Six members present. Fantastic. Y'all are standing for our invocation tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you one more time. Father, we ask you to bless this city, bless our firefighters and police department. Most of all, Father, we ask you to bless the citizens of this great town. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Action on the minutes all year. for a special meeting, 829-18. So moved. Okay. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Mr. Cobb, voting on the minutes. Yes. Mr. Cook? Oh. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shami? Yes. Minutes accepted 6 0. All right. It's emergency meeting 8 30, 18. Action on the minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Second. You have to abstain. Any discussion? This is Bernie. Mr. Cobb? Sustained. Mr. Cook? Abstain. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Lowry? Abstain. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Yeah. 7 And then action on the minutes for the regular meeting, eight, sorry, nine, four, 18. Council? So move. Second. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. The next acceptance is 6 0. <clears throat> Communications are done tonight. Mr. Bridge? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of Council, members of Public, I'd like to share with you the City Manager's report. Um, we'll start with the finance discussion. Our finance director is a little under the weather today, uh, so she will not be here. Um, I'll just read off the first few lines of her report, and then I will take uh, questions. If I can't answer them, I will get back to uh, you uh, in a uh, reasonable amount of time. So our August total revenue, we brought in $1,056,024.44. Our August total expenses was $342,001.43. Our year-to-date revenue collected is just above $4.6 million, and our year-to-date expenses is $3,447,951.53. Uh, some special notes on the updates. The in-house audit is complete, which is our state audit that we have to do every year. Uh, they're still working on the final documents to get together. Once they have all those uh, released, the council will be informed. Uh, SSI software update is still ongoing. Um, going, we are still scheduled for uh, what we call going live is November 1st. And what I mean by going live is we have all our data and it's really our, um, all of our information. So we're very excited about that. And she has uh, a big bold here under uh, special notes again, coming soon, new and improved finance reports. I will gladly accept any questions. Council, any questions? Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rich. And moving on with the city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, or Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council. Uh, under service departments, the city is uh, currently painting curbs, channelizing lines, crosswalks, and stop bars. We started that on 914. Um, we will be completing those probably by the end of the week. Hydro flushing schedule did start on September 4th, and uh, I said it was going to be running for four weeks. We did complete uh, Section A 
Um, this week would have started section C, so we're running about a week behind on that. We have not had any complaints as of the last two hydro flushings with any kind of uh, rusty or contaminated, not contaminated, but uh, dirty water that could affect your washing of whites. Uh, pothole patching is still ongoing and we have, are completing the Purple Heart and Crime Watch sign installs among other sign repairs. And we will be starting some street repair caused by trash truck traffic in various areas of the city. Various road projects, um, it is tentative to possibly start the milling portion of the White Pine Greenheart Firwood resurfacing project this Thursday the 20th. Hopefully that stays on course um, and uh, we can get our section done before the festival. The, we are still waiting to hear back on the CDBG funds for the Galewood project and the wastewater treatment plant. I've had to uh, go back to the financial institutions to rework some numbers um, due to the change that we're going to do on adding an additional pump to that project. And the traffic signal upgrade project is still acquiring right away and is still estimated to be constructed spring of 2020. And that is all I have in my report, and I can entertain any questions on that or anything else with the service departments in the city. Council, anything? Mr. Hammond. Uh, Mr. Kitko, who pays for those uh, when we go around and fix those potholes, uh, the trash trucks? Do we, we, we go, yeah, we'll, we, we take that out of our um, street levy fund to repair those. Uh, it's this, this the, it just this the regular part of the street. It's not any special area, but it's just uh, up on Towshroyer Hill. We got one over on Washington that we got to do. They're just ruts created. I'm on each side of my house on, on Scott Street. Yeah. All right. Thank you. You mind if I add yes. to that, Mr. Bridge? We had a franchise fee put into the previous contract we had, um, and it generated about seventy thousand a year for repairs that were done by the track trucks. Uh, but it's, we no longer have a franchise fee in there, so we have to take it out of that fund. Okay. Mm -hmm. Council of Finance? Mr. Cook, you had something? Where do we stand with the cemetery? Uh, you'd have to be more specific on the cemetery. How about the mowing, the weed eating? Uh, be about what about the mowing, what about the weed eating? Well, it seems like there have been quite a few complaints in regards to the uh, weeds between the headstones, and I personally was down there over the weekend. It looked like most of the mowing was done. There was a considerable amount of weed eating to be done. And I know you can't pull extra help off the street department because we need them for the potholes, patching, etc. I was there on Friday, and as you were right, almost the whole cemetery was mowed except for one section, and there was only about one and a half sections that were not weed eated. Um, when I was down there on Friday. We usually mow at least half the cemetery one week and then the other half of the, of the cemetery the next week with the two people that we got. And then we'll try to get uh, at least three or four weed eatings in during a season. That's usually the minimum. Um, but that's usually about, about max that we can uh, get fit into weed eat the cemetery. The, the biggest issue with the cemetery is 75% of the cemetery was platted um, with stones or not organized, as everybody's aware. Um, that takes us, and we do have commercial mowers, we have commercial weed eaters, we, and we usually get the uh, pride workers, especially during holidays, uh, to help us catch up on the weed eating. Um, so other than um, getting additional help down there to mow and weed eat, yeah, that's about the only thing that would correct, trying to make it where maybe it's a weekly <coughs> cemetery looks you know, immaculate as compared to keeping it just good. Are there any plans to bring extra help on board next year in regards to this problem? Uh, with the work session, we had discussed um, adding a third person into that cemetery and then maybe looking at how we man the cemetery as far as who is strategically placed down there. So we're kind of stuck in the situation we are now, and it's the same situation we've been in for as long as I've been here as the planning director still. It's the cemetery is a constant battle to try to keep up on. Um, so what I plan to do, so everyone knows, is next year hire a third seasonal person to be manned down there. But that's the only way we're going to keep up on it. I mean, we're not reducing the amount of area that we have to maintain 
So we can't cut corners by not increasing the manpower down there, if that makes sense. So um, we'll just have to try this next year with the third person, see what kind of results we get from there, um, and then adjust if needed. I understand at the workstation there was some discussion in regards to the citizen volunteering to come down here, and there was also some controversy over whether or not uh, they would be covered under the insurance in case of uh, accident or somebody getting hurt. There's not been much progress. The, the work session was late last week. Um, it's something that I don't have a problem entertaining. We'll have to get the union involved, see if they're okay with it. I think if it is going to turn into like a citizen event, I think it needs to be highly organized. And by that means we select days that they go down. So we just have random people down there any given day. Um, and the liability insurance stuff, I'm sure it can be taken care of just by signing off on a waiver. Um, but it would be a good way to bring people together who want to volunteer and help their town out. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of the probably the, the heaviest era, area in the town to where we need that extra that extra manpower. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Keiko, I just had a, just a kind of a big, broad question. On Main Street, Is what's the future plans for Main? I mean, I know that's not even on your radar, but what kind of timeline are we looking at Main Street to be resurfaced again? Uh, 2023, I've already uh, got to, with ODOT to program it. In year 2023, they're developing the legislation for Mr. Bridge to bring to you guys for approval, and then we just have to save up in that state highway fund for 20% of the cost, which I think right in the payer estimates about 117,000. So that'll come out of the state highway fund. Okay, and that's strictly a resurface, correct? Yeah, a strict yeah resurface mill and fill. No that's it. Nothing about, more than that. No curb work. Nope. That's five. That's 585,000 dollars just to do 235 from the V. That's not even going up the rest of the way because it was repaid recently. So it's going to go from the V to what a dog, and that's it. Okay. So what could we, I know you've heard me ask this a million times, what could we do now to maybe do something about the curbs in the future? I mean, I know the curbs are, are uh, the, the business owners or the homeowner's responsibility, correct, on Main Street? So, I mean, could we work on a plan of attack for that somehow, maybe to, I don't know, letters, something? I mean, because it's, I mean, I don't know what you guys think. Those, curbs are hideous coming down Main Street. It looks just gone off. I'm not, there's, you could plan to do an all or nothing um, where you do a full project, estimate the full linear footage of both sides of curb and gutter. Let's say it comes out to $500,000 and then divvied up like you do the street lighting assessment. And for people who can't pay right up front, you assess. And that's typically what cities do is do that 500, it's this much per linear foot, and you go do the whole thing. The only part is, if you're gonna dig out that much, we're getting to a point where the base to 235 is concrete. Okay. And as you can see from the expansion and contraction of the places we keep repairing, mill down, those issues will still come back. You'll, you'll, your curb and gutter will still look good, but we still have some concrete issues on the main parts of the uh, road. And the flip side of that is it's it's if you go and assess that you have to we have to front the money but the project if it's going to be done we have to initially pay that bill right and then wait for repayment through the either they come and pay it before it gets assessed or we wait till they pay their taxes and if that's the case if a business doesn't pay their taxes in two three four years we're going to have to make up that money in the meantime but if we were to try and get something done it would be best to do it in that time frame right 2023 when you're going to resurface it you would want to ultimate, do before, ultimate, you'd want to do before they come through yes okay thank you council anything else nope thank you Mr. Kiko. you're welcome good luck with that. Okay. Uh, thank you mr kiko moving on with our city manager's report our service discussion oh, i already did that excuse me our fire discussion with our fire chief chief trust mayor council citizens in the month of August, Nikolov Fire Division responded to 90 EMS calls in the city, nine in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to seven fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. The total run number so far for this year to date is 968. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid, either from Pipe Township or Bethel Park, due to, due to the two being on a response. We answered one mutual aid EMS call from Pipe Township and two for Bethel Park. 
In the month of August, the division responded to three overdose calls. Uh, and as Mr. Kuka said, we are still doing hydro flushings for the next, probably the next month, depending on weather, weather and call volume. Um, other than that, any other questions? Council, any questions for Chief Custody? Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Chastity. And moving on with the city manager report, our police discussion with our police uh, administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, council and audience. In August, deputies were dispatched to 44 calls. Assaults, we had three domestic violence. There were 13. Excuse me, Chief, can you, or uh, Sergeant, can you speak up a little bit, please? I'm having a hard time hearing you. New Corral deputies were dispatched to 44 calls uh, in the month of August. Assaults, we had three. Domestic violence, there were 13. Theft, three. Non-injury crash, two. Injury crash, your New Corral deputies did not have any. Citations, eight. Drug complaint, that should be zero. Overdose, three. Suicide attempt, three. And burglary, we had two. This summer, New Corral lost two deputies that our community had a special bond with, and both deputies, Anderson and Cruz, left for advanced positions with the Clark County Sheriff's Department. And both, and for both, it was not an, e was not an easy decision for them to make. Um, so, starting at the end of August, New Corral has their two new deputies out on patrol. Deputy Nicholas Moody, he came from our Uniform Patrol Division, and Joseph Liming went through a 10-week training program, and he was working on all three ships to get out to be on his own. This is the deputy schedules. Uh, deputy Nick Moody is on first shift. And, uh, deputy uh, Rachel Allender is second shift. Deputy Cesar Gonzalez is a cover shift and Deputy Joe Liming is on third shift. And as always, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Department at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. And this could be the phone call we need to solve a crime or crime. And that is my report with that. And if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Council, any questions for Mr. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And completing the city manager report under informational items, uh, Twin Creeks Homeowners Association, uh, there will be no need for an additional planning board meeting at this time. Uh, I was remembering, thought I was remembering, we had one or two points that. Uh, however, uh, as of late last week, Thursday, Friday ish, um, I got a call, um, and there's some issues with. A few things. Uh, one that we're supposed to accept two parcels of land on behalf of the city, the parcel across from the bridge and then also the, I think, basin retainer thing. Um, those titles did not come back clean. Um, actually, there's a mortgage on one of the parcels that the homeowners association don't even own. Um, and the other title is, is also has issues as well. So they need to be cleared up. Well, the nail in the coffin, possible nail in the coffin is this. We also learned that um, they actually recorded, and it's very confusing, they recorded restrictions on the property twice. Uh, when it was first um, thought out, when it was first developed, um, the initial development phases as far as the lot numbers and the size of the houses and setbacks. Um, and then the homeowners association, when they formed, they went in and added there what they wanted to add in, like the mailboxes and the bushes and the siding has to match, and also some additional restrictions on the lots, and then recorded that as well. So what we have now is two legal binding documents that dictate how that land is supposed to be developed. So regardless if our planning board says, yes, this is how we want your house built, or this is how far we want you set back, it doesn't matter because the recorded instruments take precedence. So what needs to happen is they need to get majority vote of the current homeowners association and majority vote of the first time it was recorded to dissolve both of those. 
if that doesn't happen, there is no point for us to continue on with this endeavor. And I say that because of this. Say, the homeowners association, they go and they vote to dissolve. Okay, so they're off, they're off, they're off the table. But we still have the issue of the first recording being done that still trumps new Carlisle zoning code. So, if they cannot dissolve or eradicate the first recording instrument, there is no sense for us to incorporate anything into our zoning code and let the existing plat restrictions proceed. We will still have our, have our hands in issuing the zoning permit. I is, Ms. Hoffman, you want to build a house up there, you come to me and say, here's my plot plan. I want to be this far back from the rear uh, lot line, this far away from the side lot line. We'll still regulate that, but we would not regulate, and we still, like we don't regulate now, you got to have matching siding from your shed to your house. So our attorneys on both parties are trying to figure this out. Um, what I have told our attorney is I'm not, I don't feel as though the city should have to foot the bill to correct this. Um, especially I don't want to foot the bill if we know, know for sure both parties can't dissolve what they need to dissolve because at that point in time it's a, it's, a, it's a worthless effort. So as more information is given to me, I will update everyone, but that's just where we are currently with the Twin Creeks uh, HOA. Any questions on that before I go on to the next? Because it's kind of a lot. No. Good. Okay. Um, play, playground equipment installation. Um, when I wrote, as I was writing this on last week, uh, the uh, pour and play was being constructed, and that is the stuff the kids would stand on. I just went up there and actually got on it. You do sink. It is very soft. Um, so that, that is underway. Uh, it did need a 48 hour cure time, which I'm assuming went over the weekend. Um, we still need to have a ribbon cutting ceremony for grant requirements. So as soon as that is uh, scheduled with L from the county, I will let everyone know and maybe we can all show up and open that new playground equipment officially to our, uh, to our kids. 2019-2023 CIP, legal ad was placed in the new Carlisle News for 919 print date. Uh, we need to give time for public inspection. Um, so that CIP will be on display at the city building um, until uh, the council votes on the resolution in the first meeting in October. Madison Street School, I'm currently working on asbestos uh, removal quotes. I did get a quote back for the asbestos survey. We have to start with the survey first. Um, and that cost was around maybe $2,000 or $3,000 for that. And then um, we still wait on the second quote back. Um, so as soon as I have more detailed information on that, I will let everyone know. The reason I'm doing this is because at any point in time we want to give that school away for someone else to tear down, or we retain it, tear it down ourselves, we need to have an asbestos report done before we take anything out. Um, I did speak with one of the guys last week briefly. Um, all he told me to be worried about is if they pull a sample on that school. And since it's been vacant and unused for such a long time, if they would pull a sample from the ceiling and it had more than 1% of asbestos in it, we now have to treat that entire school as being contaminated opposed to just individual things. So um, I don't know what's going to come of that and I don't know, I can't sit there and say, I think it's gonna be this much or this much to remove all the asbestos, but we do need to do our due diligence and have a updated current outlook of what exactly is in the school. Union negotiations currently underway. We had our first meeting this afternoon. Um, it says here on the city manager report that the next meeting is actually Thursday, September 20th. That was actually rescheduled today uh, due to a family emergency with uh, someone else in, uh, that was involved in negotiations. Um, so we did push that back actually to October 2nd. And I chose October 2nd because it'd give me one more council meeting to have executive session with council if needed. And that is all I have for the city manager report. I'd be happy to uh, entertain any questions. Any questions, council? Nope, thank you. Thank you. All right, moving along. We now have comments from members of the public. Please limit comments to five minutes or less. Great, Mark. Do you mind giving your address and your name? John Kraybacher, 307 North Henry Street. Um, my wife and I was putting up crop rock posters the other day for the direction with people to walk. We, ca we came to New Carlisle Park. Council, Megan. When we were putting one in New Carlisle Park, a neighbor came up and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And he said that we had, 
anyway, after the discussion, he said that we have a lot of homeless people that camp out in the park or sleep in the park, you know, up in New Carlisle Park. And, and we're trying to uh, prevent them from sleeping. He thought that we, we were feeding them, you know, me feeding people, you know. What to say. So anyway, we, we put one there. And I'm, my question was to, the Sar to Sergeant Underwood, and I asked him out there, and I just wanted him to repeat it, you know, about the homeless situation in, in town. Do we have a lot of people sleeping in the park? We did have trouble at Brew Baker at one point, uh, but what about New Carlisle Park and the ones in the residential areas? I go through each monthly report from each deputy, and I have not received one complaint this year of a homeless person being in a park. If they're there, when, they, when we pull in, they hide from us. If you call it in and tell us they're there, we try to come in and, and we try to find them. We try to find them anyhow. But there is homeless people up here. Uh, their locations, they move from time to time. Mm -hmm. So I'll have our deputies when I leave here, I'll set them, have them start checking the parks. Parks more. Multiple uh, times through the night. Okay, do you see, uh, well, you probably already answered the question, but I'm just going to sure. you know, spit it out again. And do, do we see them in the vacant houses there? You know, we, do have look, several vacant houses. Do we have a lot of break-ins, maybe the homeless people hang, hanging out in those? Or, I know Dayton had. Well, we had three thefts and two burglaries last month. Uh, and the burglaries were not due, or the thefts were not due to homeless people. So if that's a problem, uh, this is the first time I know of it. Okay. So I'll put it out to the people on patrol uh, in the morning. Okay. It's a problem, and I'll, st I'll start having them uh, give me a checkpoint time when they're in whatever park, and it's, a, it's okay or not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from members of the public? Hearing none. Committee reports there are none tonight. Mrs. Berner. Going on to our first resolution, 18-13R, Introduction Public Hearing in Action tonight. A resolution accepting the 2019 <coughs> official cert certificate of estimated resources along with the tax year 2019 rates and amounts certification from the Clark County Budget Commission. Council. So move. Second. An explanation of this resolution. Uh, this is one of our, what we call general housekeeping resolution. Um, every year we submit a tax budget to uh, Clark County Auditor's Office. And what they do is they take that look at that tax budget and they submit us back this great thing that says, this is how much money that you're going to be getting. <clears throat> and that's exactly what this is. We take these numbers and we plug them into our 2019 operating budget. Council, any questions? This is better. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Resolution accepted 6-0. Moving on to our ordinances. Ordinance 18-23, public hearing in action tonight. And ordinance supplementing certain appropriations in New Carlisle City Ordinance 18-03. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to approve ordinance 1823. Second. Was that Mr. Shannon? Yes. yes. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, we needed to take a look at um, how much money we had left on that we budgeted out for the year. Um, some things we needed to allocate more of our savings, our reserve fund, and to that we did experience higher than normal um, law director fees for this year. And also we um, uh, undershot our income tax collection fees by about $30,000, but that's a good thing because they, the fees are based on how much they collect. And when I initially introduced this ordinance, I had a um, put a report together for council and I say that we're about 220 or 230,000 up from this time last year on the income tax collections. And then the other thing of the state highway fund, even though this traffic signal is 100% free to the city of New Carlisle, we do have to issue checks for that, um, but we will get reimbursed on those checks. 
Council, any questions? <coughs> Hearing none, Mrs. Berner. All right, Mr. Cobb. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Cook. No. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Ordinance accepted five to one. Moving on to B, Ordinance 18-25, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on 10-1-18. And Ordinance Amending Chapter 246, Employees Generally, Chapter 240, Citizens Participation Plan, Chapter 628, Fair Housing and Employment, Chapter 636, Offenses Relating to Persons, and Chapter 812, Cable Communications Systems of the Code of Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle to adopt comprehensive non-discrimination provisions for the City of New Carlisle. Other business. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the City Building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The next Crime Watch meeting will be held October 10th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the next thing is our executive session. Council, any comments before we go into executive session? Mr. Mayor. Oh, go ahead. I just had, I saw um, Mr. Bridges' email went out the other day. I was just curious, is there any, especially since two of them are in the audience, is there any updates on the special election? I'm waiting still from Lynette. I mean, aren't we? She didn't say anything. She was supposed to call the uh, Secretary of State's office. So. Um, I, Lynette said she uh, talked to her briefly this morning. This morning, she had just said she hasn't heard anything back. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I guess we'll, as well now. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. And Council, Mr. Cook, you had something? No, I was going to oh. ride along on that. All right. Do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Cook? Yes. Accepted 6 0. Right, we're going to go into a short five minute recess and then we'll come back. Who was the first? Vice Mayor. Oh, we're going into executive session to discuss collective bargaining matters. And no business should be discussed afterwards. Um, actually, there may. There may be. Yeah, okay. because if we go into executive session, we can't vote. Yeah. So if we have changes that council wants to do to the negotiations, we'll have to go back into regular session to vote on that. Okay. So then there will be. Uh, that's my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong. I. This is our first time actually doing. So we, like can't vote. Yeah, we, we can't uh, vote in, in the last seven years. Session. It's normally this is what you get. You vote on it, and that's that. We're actually going to negotiations. So yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think that we probably should just cover ourselves and so there could be potential mm -hmm. uh, discussions after this and then we'll go into executive session and then after that we'll check out and see if anyone's outside. Sounds good. All right. Yeah. So we have a five minute recess. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. A motion to return to regular session. Second. Second. All right. Mr. Bridge. Um, the second was Shammy. Yeah. Hold on. Who was the first? Me. Mr. Lowry. So now you guys are spread out and I won't get it mixed up this time. First, Mr. Lowry. Second, Shammy. Mr. Lowry. Uh, okay, I just call the roll, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Councilman Lowry. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Yes. Councilman <laughs> Cook, Councilman Lindsay, yes. Mayor Reynolds, yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay, I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry. And Councilman Shannon, yes. That was a two eight. We are now returned back to regular session. Let me make sure. Come on, sports. Wow. Okay. 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 Mr. Lowry. 
I had a few things I wanted to go over. Oh, okay. Let's make a motion we adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. <laughs>